Hello and welcome everyone and now we are going to start something called as connections. So actually we are going to see three types of connections. See because we are going to design steel structures. So structures are the assembly of different steel members. So all those steel members has to be brought together and there has to be some connection between each member. So those connections are called as joints. And their joints are uh, created with the help of connectors or also known as fasteners in the literature. So these connectors are of three types and uh, we are going to study the connection using rivet, bolted connections, welded connections. So these three are the basic three types of connections that is in part of our syllabus. And basically we are not going to study much design of riveted connection because the riveted connection nowadays are obsolete they are not in much use as such so we are going to only focus on the design of bolted as well as welded connections okay and then of course we will discuss many more topics including eccentric connections and efficiency of joints so let us start with the riveted connections and as we said the riveted connections are nowadays obsolete it doesn't mean that it has been completely eradicated but it is not in much use since when the welding has come into picture and the rivets were made of ductile material why ductile material was made because it has to be hammered okay and it has a round bar which was called as sank so if you look at the rivets these were the initial rivets that were being used in the riveted connections i hope you must have seen these types of rivets somewhere this was the procedure how it was being used to connect two member you see one plate is here and two plate is here this is the rivet this is hammered and this is going to be hammered okay you see there is a support here and this is the hammer so that's why it was made of ductile material and if you look at this picture of rivet so the top part of the rivet was called as head and then the round bar was called as sank and the conical protruding at the bottom is known as tail okay now rivets are classified based on the shape of their head so there can be snap type rivet which is very common or there can be pan type rivet there can be flat countersunk type rivet or there can be round countersunk type of rivet this all depends on the shape of the head of the rivet so this is what you see the different types of rivet this is the flat head because the head is flat exactly and then there is countersunk head and in this the head is like a trapezium and this is the angle of the countersunk okay this is the theta and then there is snap head snap head is the most common type of rivet which has a bottom type of head and then there is pan head type of rivet so there are even more types of rivet based on the shape of their head but we are not considering much so nowadays these rivets are not in much use instead modern rivets look like something like this do you see this these all are the different types of rivet being used nowadays and with the help of these modern rivets we make connections like this you see these rivets okay so this is an example of a riveted connection okay and these riveted are driven into the holes with the help of rivet gun so this is the one of the picture of the rivet gun this can be the other type of rivet gun so with the help of these we drive in the rivets into the joints hole okay and then what you see here looking like the nail you see this vertical portion looking like the nail this is called as mandrel and this is thrown out when you do the riveting okay and what you see at the top of these nail is the rivet okay and they are also called as cap so these rivets are driven with the help of rivet guns now it says the diameter of sank is called as the nominal diameter see you are hearing for the first time the nominal diameter so i must define you what is nominal diameter nominal diameter is that value of diameter which is used in the calculation or the analysis part of the strength of the joint so in case of rivets 
diameter of shank becomes the nominal diameter. So certainly you will ask that what is the use of calling it nominal diameter. See when we will be studying the bolted connection in that case the nominal diameter is not the diameter of the shank. It is something different. So do not worry much we will discuss that also. And basically there are two types of rivet. One is the hot driven rivet and other is the cold driven rivet. Now uh, as uh, the name suggests hot driven rivet has to be driven when the rivet is in hot condition and cold driven rivet is driven when it is in the ambient temperature. That's why these hot driven rivets are sometimes called as soft rivets because they are driven in the shop or the industries itself. Whereas the cold driven rivet can be easily driven even in the field or on the site itself. So there is not much difficulty in cold driven rivet. So if you look at the mechanism of hot driven rivet, the rivets are first heated and when it will be heated, there will be increase in diameter and that heated diameter and the material is ductile. So it is very easy to hammer and when we hammer it, then we leave it to cool down and on cooling, the length of rivet reduces. And when the length of rivet reduces, the joints become very tighter and consequently the diameter of rivet also reduces. So when the diameter also reduces, some space will be left between the rivet and the hole made for driving rivet. So that's why it has got little less strength than cold driven rivet. So in cold driven rivet, there is no need of heating. It just needs very high pressure to be hammered on it and the strength of cold driven rivet will be more than the hot driven rivet. So if you look at the differences, it is let down here that the protruding end of the rivet. So in case of hot riveting protruding end of the rivet, which is called as tail is heated to an elevated temperature prior to upsetting. Since the rivet material remains in plastic state due to heating. So considerably lower pressure is required to apply on the die and external heat source is required since heating process requires time. So it's time consuming process and due to volumetric shrinkage during cooling tensile stress develops within the rivet sank. So it helps holding the parts tightly. But what happens that diameter also reduces. So there is some space left in that and due to which there may be vibration in the joint. Whereas in case of cold riveting, no such heating is carried out and it is done at the room temperature and for same rivet material and size comparatively more pressure is required because there, uh, there is no heating and cold riveting is time efficient and no such tensile stress develops within the rivet sank and consequently gripping force is less. But yes, there is no space left between the rivet and the hole. Next comes the types of riveted joints and this is very very important. So basically there are two types of riveted joints. One is the lap joint and other is the butt joint. So lap joint as the name suggests there is some overlap. So two plate section of steel or two flat section of steel are brought here and are kept in such a way that one plate is overlapping on the other plate. And now what we have done, we have made holes in these plates and through these holes we will do riveting. So when we overlap two plates or two members and make a riveted joint, such a joint is called as lap joint. And when there is one row of riveting done, such a type of joint is called single riveted lap joint okay single riveting line is there and if we do two rows of holes in the lap joint such a joint will be called double riveted lap joint so this is very easy to understand these lap joints and butt joint will come very often in our numericals so it is very very important to understand these type of joints but there is one serious disadvantage in lap joint and what is that? When we apply axial forces on these two plates in the lap joint, although these two forces cancel each other and there is equilibrium in the horizontal direction. But if you notice, there is few distance left 
between these two forces they are not passing through the same axis so this distance is denoted by letter e and e is called eccentricity okay and due to which there is development of moment m is equal to p times e okay and this moment try to rotate this joint in clockwise direction isn't it so to overcome this disadvantage of development of moment due to eccentricity in lap joint people came up with butt joint and in butt joint they kept both the plates in the same axial line okay and now how to connect these two steel plates so they thought of covering it with a cover plate so there are two types of plate one is the main plate and other is the cover plate cover plate is just used to cover the main plates okay so they brought a cover plate over the two main plates and they uh, punched or drilled holes in cover plates as well as main plates and if they kept only one cover plate and they made holes only in one direction on each plate then such a joint came out to be called as single riveted and single cover butt joint okay you see this picture single riveted line and single cover plate so when they did two lines of riveting such a joint was called double riveted but single cover plate butt joint but instead of making one cover plate only at the top they also thought of bringing one other cover plate at the bottom also and such a joint was more safe and more durable and even the strength also increased for the joint and such a joint is called when there is one line of riveting single riveting double cover butt joint and if there is two lines of riveting double riveted double cover butt joint all right so these all are the combinations of different joints but don't get confused actually there are only two types of joint lap joint and butt joint okay and it depends on how many rows of riveting you do there can be three rows of riveting four and it depends on the situation okay so mainly focus on single riveted lap joint and single cover plate butt joint and double cover plate butt joint all right so riveting was earlier used to be done in linear fashion and such a pattern of riveting was called chain pattern but people also came out with staggered pattern diamond pattern and the combination of both staggered diamond okay so what are these patterns of riveting let us see this so you all are seeing here the pattern of riveted joint and the very common type of riveting that comes into the mind is the chain riveting now what is special in this chain riveting so in case of chain riveting pattern riveting is done in a matrix format and you all are seeing these are the rivets driven in vertical column and all these columns are aligned along the same horizontal rows and such a pattern of riveting is chain riveting so what has been observed in chain riveting is that what happens when we apply very high tensile force along the axis of these plates then plate do not fail in between but rather along these critical sections okay and even in few cases it has been observed that failure has occurred like this you see this or failure has occurred like uh, this okay so these types of failure has been uh, very common in chain type of riveting so people thought of how to manipulate the pattern of riveting in such a way that the chances of failure also reduces as well as uh, the strength of joint also increases and the joint also remain intact so then they came out with the uh, thought of diamond riveting and in this pattern of riveting what they did they arranged the rivet in such a way that they form a diamond type of pattern so you can very easily guess that there are also different
chances of failure along these critical sections but yes chances of failure is more at this critical section because there are three holes whereas chances is less on this critical section because there are two holes where a chances of failure is less on this critical section because there is only one hole so such a pattern of riveting is really revolutionary and because of this diamond pattern of riveting became very popular and the next comes the staggered pattern of riveting in a staggered pattern of riveting what we have done is that we have provided rivets in one column like this and then in another column like this and then what we have done between these two parallel chain type of pattern of riveting we have provided another column of riveting with few staggering we have provided in between okay and in the same fashion we have again staggered here the pattern of riveting here also and this goes on in the alternate fashion like this okay so this type of pattern of riveting is called staggered riveting and in staggered pattern of riveting the chances of failure reduces drastically you see what is the interesting phenomena happens here is that when the joint is about to fail along this critical section see what can happen is that the crack start propagating from here and as soon as it reaches here now the direction of crack propagation is confused it may go towards this rivet it may go towards this rivet it may go towards this rivet and if you will see it is very clear that this distance is very large okay isn't it so the what pattern the crack propagation will follow certainly the crack propagation will not be in a straight line it will be staggered pattern isn't it so because the crack propagation wants minimum resistance or minimum resistance kahan pe milegi jahan pe minimum path traverse karna hai jahan pe kam se kam length of plate ko tear karna hai and in this case what happens the crack reaches here and then it reaches here and then it reaches here and then it reaches here and finally breaks the joint so in a staggered pattern of riveting what is the benefit there is less chance of failures along these critical section why because in the comparison with chain riveting the failures used to occur along the linear critical sections and in comparison to those failures in case of a staggered riveting there is a larger length that the crack has to propagate in this type of pattern of riveting so there is less chance of breakage and the strength of the joint has also increased i hope this is very clear to you so that's why this staggered pattern of riveting is used in comparison with the chain riveting so in few cases staggered pattern of riveting is also clubbed with the diamond pattern of riveting and such a pattern of riveting is called staggered diamond pattern of riveting all right so you can draw that diagram in your home also and uh, the design of riveted connection is almost similar to the design of bolted connections and there are only few differences in case of uh, bolts the nominal diameter is something different than the shank diameter in case of rivets the nominal diameter is equal to the shank diameter and the shank diameter or the diameter of the rivet is equal to the diameter of hole do you follow this whereas in case of bolt connection uh, the diameter of hole is usually 1 mm or 2 mm larger than the diameter of bolts because of the threading provided into it and uh, the design stress of rivet is larger than the design stress of bolt because the diameter of rivet is Uh, same here as the nominal diameter okay so some of the things will become more clear as we go on discussing this topic in the upcoming videos so till that stay tuned and stay safe thank you